We know from our work that they're more likely to experience a great deal of pressure from the people who are uh, controlling them, uh, managers, to not use condoms. They see much higher numbers of clients, many, whether it's a day or a week, much higher than people who uh, are older. Uh, reasons behind that, they're a uh, multitude. These people, you know, why are we talking about all this? Why is, are so many young people in there? Because this is about money. And people, using that term loosely, um, will pay a lot more money to have sex with a younger girl. Some of it is around that they, um, you know, they're viewed as, as virginal, more pure, that they're going to be less um, likely to become infected from these folks, that they don't have to use a condom. Uh, I think also a lot, just a lot of it is about power um, as well. But in any case, there is more money to be made off of these people. Uh, and that's why you see these much higher numbers of clients um, and much more pressure to uh, not use condoms. Uh, you also see less HIV knowledge. And all of these education programs, um, you know, empowerment programs, condom promotion programs, one, we're excluding them from our studies, but also they're underrepresented. And when we, when we talk to these folks, they're much less likely to have been exposed to any of these uh, programs. And I don't think it's just about that um, they're younger, because if you look at people who are in there the same amount of time, but started from a younger time, they still uh, have less uh, knowledge. Also, anecdotally, they're more vulnerable to uh, violence from the police. All people uh, in prostitution are vulnerable to violence from uh, police. Police are not the place you go in uh, most parts of the world for assistance. There is something that you have to, to deal with, and police violence is certainly omnipresent. Um, in their lives. But violence is also coming from clients and managers. Now again, anybody in prostitution is vulnerable to violence. But violence is, occurs at a different level among these younger people, younger girls in prostitution, particularly around the time of initiation. Now, why would that be? If we think about these folks as human beings, and um, I think I have a slide in here again, I sort of stay away from the trafficking, but the if you're an adolescent in sex work, it's far more likely to be coerced or forced into sex work than somebody who's, who's older when they come in. And from all of the you know, hundreds of narratives that uh, we've worked with, what you see over and over again is however it is that they got there, whether they were um, you know, drugged, kidnapped, or much more likely they were just economically coerced, you're going to have a job um, working in a restaurant, working as domestic help, um, and then you end up being uh, you know, handed off these people and brought into this dark room and, and told this is what you're going to do. Um, people resist. Now, I don't say, okay, there's, their whole world is at stake. It, you know, it, it is anywhere, but particularly in more traditional cultures where this means the worst thing possible for them, uh, for their families, um, and so they do just about anything to resist. And the way that uh, you have to uh, maintain compliance, whether we're talking about in, you know, in a government or in a smaller organization, is with uh, violence and the threat of violence. And uh, that's what you see over and over again, is tremendous violence uh, occurring against these girls at entry. Um, these are some horrendous uh, quotes, uh, and these are not even the worst examples of the kinds of things that um, these folks were reporting. Um, all of this to break these girls down to the point that they're willing to um, comply. 
when I talk about the threat of violence, what we also heard over and over again is that, you know, when they say, you know, we're going to kill you or we're going to kill your child if it's somebody who has children, uh, they're very potent threats because most of these people have witnessed people being killed. Um, so it's a, a, just a, an absolutely nightmarish world that um, most of these folks end up in. Um, this is just what I was saying before. Um, you know, as I'm staying away from the T word, I'm also frankly, these days I'm trying to break it down also to, to, so that we all know what we're talking about. Being young, being forced and coerced, these things go together, but I think in some ways it's helpful to talk about them separately because when we bring them together, uh, there are all sorts of confusion um, occurs, but there's absolutely a relationship there. People who are younger uh, are more likely to be forced or coerced. Those are the, the more vulnerable folks. Okay, so in terms of talking about the, the, the risk factors, I was just um, talking about, there's a study that we did around HIV positive female sex workers. So they're obviously all HIV positive. They thought, you know, what happened to these folks in the first month, based on everything else we were hearing, there hadn't been any studies of saying what what was that first month like, and uh, lo and behold, it was very different for the people who uh, came in at a younger age. That um, they were much more likely to, uh, particularly the very young ones, so here you know under age of 15, to have uh, seven or more clients a day in that initial month. Um, most of those young kids, they never had the opportunity to use a condom in that first month, so tremendous exposure, no protection, and the last point on here, uh, much higher rates of violence, where 59% of them reporting that they were whoops, very often subjected to violence in that first month from clients or managers. So, you know, a picture starts to come together here where this initiation uh, is it's a very critical time. Again, at all, some level it's commonsensical, um, but whether we're thinking about it from a human rights perspective or from an HIV prevention perspective, there's something very important to pay attention to here. What's also interesting is that these people who came in uh, at younger ages continue to be at higher risk. That there's a trajectory that they're set upon that seems to be different than people who come in when they're older because in, uh, among adults, those who came in as adolescents are more likely uh, to report recent unprotected sex, uh, recent anal sex, uh, having sex with a client after that client's refused to use a condom, so basically feeling like they don't have that choice, um, and to be uh, victimized in the last week by violence. So these people continue to be more vulnerable. Um, and there's obviously a lot of, of questions that are made to be answered there. These sort of different uh, groups of people um, are, uh, uh, are they ending up and working in very different venues? Um, we have actually more we can dig into in, in some of these data. So to get back to the, the, the first point, in terms of what we know out there, uh, it's about these young people in sex work. Uh, it's really, really limited. Um, I said the majority of large studies and most all intervention trials uh, have either not included or underrepresented adolescent sex workers. So they either, you know, the cutoff is right there. Very often what goes on is they, the, the range, the lowest age range is 20 or below, so you can't really know. They can avoid the magic 18 of, you know, are you doing something um, unethical here? Also, if you talk to folks who have experienced this, what do you think they say when someone asks, how old are you? 
I mean, you think about the, the threats that these people are under. They're all very explicitly told that you are, you're 19. Anybody says anything, anybody can talk to you, which they're probably not, but if they do, you're 19. And so act, you know, uh, accurate self-reporting of, of age, uh, minor age, is certainly very, very unlikely. So it's very hard to know are they there um, in, uh, in these studies uh, or not. A critical issue here is sampling. So if we go to social science and think about our uh, sampling uh, methodology, sampling is everything. How'd you get those people? Well, in this case, I have to remember that um, sex work organizations that, you know, unless you're talking about really um, lower level street-based sex work, it, it's, these are very rigidly hierarchical organizations. There are people who control groups of other people who have absolute say over everything that happens with those folks, including whether they're going to be involved in any program, going to get any kinds of uh, services, or going to get to talk to anybody else. So when you go out and do uh, the kinds of mapping procedures that we might do in a red light area, okay, how many uh, you know, female sex workers are there in this area? Well, we're going to map all the different venues, you know, on this block, and you know how you do that? You go to the door, um, and you get to talk to, if anybody's going to talk to you, um, the manager. And you ask the manager, who's there? What do you think the manager says? I've got a bunch of 15-year-old girls in here. No, they don't say that. Um, what and it's impossible to know how common this is, but certainly what we've heard in many, many stories is that these people are often hidden in other parts um, of a venue, if we're talking like a brothel, um, in, as uh, cellular technology has taken off everywhere in the world, they're typically actually in another physical location where you know, they're being managed and they'll be, you know, once they'll be brought or they'll, they'll somehow set up somebody with them if they, when somebody comes and asks for somebody uh, who's younger, who they think is, is, is not somebody from the police or a, a public health program. So when you do this sample, you're, you're, they're not there. You're not going to uh, hear about them. You're not going to see them. You're not going to um, talk to them. And that's, uh, it's, uh, if you look at the ages of the people who have been in these huge studies, they're much older. They're 27 to 30 years old. So when we go back and look at, gee, when's everybody coming in? You know, they're, they're coming in more than 10 years before that. So we're obviously not getting um, much of a representative sample in there. So just thinking about, you know, this first section. So we have a large proportion of uh, people in sex work um, who have entered as kids. We don't know very much about them because they've been excluded or underrepresented in what studies we have. We certainly don't know how they would uh, fare in um, any of the, the interventions that have been set up. And we know they're at higher risk than other folks um, in terms of both HIV infection and violence. And that, for some reason, they're at continued high risk when they get older. Um, a big, big focus of HIV research uh, at this point is, as we've sort of started to get away from, you know, spending all of our money on trying to find a vaccine, is getting everybody into treatment, getting everybody tested and getting everybody into treatment. And what uh, we're seeing, and we, we're, we need to do more work around this, is that, you know, not surprisingly, based on everything that I've been talking about, these are, these are, People in sex work are, tend to be quite a traumatized group, period. There's a different level of trauma, though, that uh, you see among these people who experience the kind of stuff that, that I've been talking about, uh, those kinds of um, initiations. They're in very different shape. And their concerns about being HIV infected are not perhaps what you would expect if you just follow something like our dandy health belief model. Um, it's not quite so straightforward um, for them. 